Hello gamers and operators, my name is Icebergs. Today I'm here to reveal the real reason the Battlefield 2042 release was delayed and discuss the Battlefield 2042 beta, which has some great features and some flaws. Still, it is to be expected from a beta that is months old. That's many months old. Anyways, let's dive right into the real reason the Battlefield 2042 release was delayed. Let us start right off with the real reason the Battlefield 2042 release was delayed. Battlefield 2042 release was postponed due to Battlefield's only competition, Call of Duty. Let me explain. In 2020, Call of Duty Warzone released Season 6 of their Battle Pass, a season based entirely around a Halloween event called The Haunting of Verdansk. The Haunting of Verdansk was released on October 20th and ran to November 3rd. The Haunting of Verdansk 2021 is scheduled for almost the exact same dates. The original Battlefield 2042 release date was supposed to have been October 22nd, so it would have landed right in the middle of the Call of Duty Haunting of Verdansk 2021 events. You are probably wondering, why would EA even care about releasing Battlefield at the same time as the Call of Duty Halloween event? And that is because the Haunting of Verdansk and Call of Duty Dwarves on 2020 had the highest consecutive player count to date for Call of Duty, actually being the all-time peak of Call of Duty Warzone, and leading to one of Activision Blizzard's highest grossing quarters that year. So when looking at the original release date, you can understand why EA did not want to compete with this event and try to fight for a high player count. So to be safe, they decided to move the release back almost a month to November 19th. We also know Call of Duty has a habit of extending special events and seasons to increase their maximum player count and revenue stream. Along with the fact that we know Call of Duty will release Vanguard on November 5th. So EA moved the release to November 19th to give themselves more time to advertise and promote Battlefield 2042 and give Call of Duty their two weeks of fame. The game, however, is and has been ready for a while now, and the beta is a version of the game from many months back. The 2042 beta was filled with tons of holy crap did you see that moments, and other only Battlefield sites. After DICE's post-game question and answer session, they seemed a little surprised by the glitches, and like they were stifling a chuckle. A version of the beta we played was months old, and they were humorously surprised to remember the bugs and glitches that they had fixed months ago in the final version of the game that still existed in the beta version of the game. One thing to note is the dates of the Battlefield 2042 creation. We know the alpha version of the game was released way back in March. We had an alpha tester release drawings of the alpha, and those drawings were later confirmed to be true by EA at the E3 Expo on June 9th. On June 9th, we saw the first preview of 2042. On June 13th, we visited the Alpha gameplay trailer. However, the final version of the game was tested sometime around August September, leading to believe that the beta was designed sometime in late June, early July. Overall, the beta seemed to be very well made, but it had its share of bugs and glitches that were rarely game-breaking will surely have a complete game by the time the final version rolls around. From a weapons perspective, the weapons and movement of said weapons were fantastic. I personally loved the plus four system of weapon attachment handling. I found it easily maneuverable and gave us a vast range of loadouts we could make on the fly. This is a huge step forward for Battlefield that adds new levels of gameplay beyond what we have seen in other games adds to the chaotic effects of all warfare in 2042. However, we did see some weapons excelled and were the meta for the Battlefield 2042 beta. The best guns were the M5A3 and the K30, both of which had high rates of fire and vast ranges of attachments. The M5A3 is an apparent variation of the M4A1, a modern day weapon of choice for the many militaries and the K-30 is just a crisp vector, but futurized. 
The M5A3 had a steady rate of fire with minimal recoil, even if it had the ability to reach out and touch somebody at distance with a high stopping power. K30 excelled in close range conflicts, however it had a low stopping power but a significant rate of fire which made up for that, and was really the close quarters gun of the beta. One problem I had was with the theory that changing a mag changes your caliber. In reality, that does not work. You cannot shoot one round of 9mm, then 5.56, and then 300 blackout without changing the entire barrel and magazine entry of the gun, along with many other things, but I'm not going to dive into that right now. I loved all the weapons in the beta, and I can't wait to see the slew of weapons we will see in the entire game. The vehicles were excellent, with vehicles effectiveness improved by the more members of your team you had in the vehicle. However, I thought the attack helicopter was quite overpowered. It had two types of ammunition for the pilot, a 40mm grenade launcher for a gunner, and two more gunner positions that utilize miniguns. On the other hand, the APCs and many ground transport vehicles really effectively close to significant objectives. The vehicles seemed to be nailed down, but some balancing would be better for some more robust attacking vehicles. And a little more versatility in anti-vehicle supplies would be excellent. Overall, I feel the weapons in vehicles show us a pretty clear picture of what to expect in 2042. But we know there will be a plethora of weapons in the game, and significantly more than what we saw in the beta. As a whole, I think the Battlefield 2042 to beta could not have been any better, but with those suffused exceptions that persisted and the glitches that were evidently fixed months ago. I think the beta performed better than expectations were for it, but as many people who still love Battlefield 4, it leads me to believe that Battlefield 2042 will have a long-term fan base, with constant free and downloadable content and new expansions coming out in the next four years. Battlefield 2042 may be set to overcome the Call of Duty franchise as the best first person shooter on the market, at least for the next year. Personally very excited for Battlefield 2042, I think the Brady gave us great indications, and I cannot be more excited for the game release on November 19th. If you liked the video or there was anything you had questions about, let me know in the comments below. Also do me a favor, drop a like and subscribe if you like my content I'm making. Until next time, stay frosty.